Now, of course, we begin here with our big story, the United States watching closely over a possible retaliatory Iranian attack against Israel that could widen the scope of the war in the region. Sources familiar with intelligence on the matter are saying the U.S. believes a strike could happen, quote, in the coming days. Now, that intel has been shared with lawmakers detailing that Iran could use drones and missiles to attack, quote, regional assets in Israel. Now, all of this following an Israeli airstrike in Syria last week that killed a top commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, along with six other officers at a consulate in Damascus. Iran's Supreme Leader vowing revenge shortly after that attack. President Biden addressing the threat at a press conference yesterday, saying that the U.S. will do all it can to protect Israel's security. Israel's defense minister echoing a similar sentiment, saying that the country will will defend itself no matter who attacks or where. Uh, joining me right now is the senior director at the Center on Military and Political Power at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, Bradley Bowen. Thank you so much for being here with us on a very, very busy day. So look, let's jump right into this, okay? It, it does appear that Iran might have some options, right, if they want to retali retaliate against Israel. Uh, but when you're looking at all of these, in the realm of reality here, do you think by your assessment that a retaliatory strike would include a direct strike in Israeli homeland? I do think that's possible. I, I think we could also see strikes against U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. I think you could see Iranian back strikes uh, against softer targets around the world, against civilians, against Israeli embassies or consulates. Um, and uh, I think uh, Israel, uh, out of due diligence, has to be prepared for all of that. And uh, some in Israel, frankly, um, uh, would not be entirely upset if they tried to attack Israel directly from Iran, because that would give them the opportunity that many believe is necessary to hit back at the puppet master that has been orchestrating all these terror proxy puppet attacks for, uh, against Israel for so long. Well, yeah, so let's elaborate a little bit on that. Let's talk about these proxies, right? So do you think that if and when this retaliatory strike were to happen, that Iran would be more likely to use some of its proxy groups like Hezbollah or even Shia militants? Or do you think that you might actually see the Revolutionary Guard do it themselves? It's a great question. That's essentially been at risk of oversimplification, the grand strategy of the Islamic Republic of Iran, mm -hmm. I would argue, for the last 40 years. They've used these these terror proxies to advance their foreign policy, to attack the United States, our forces, to Israel and others, while displacing the counterpunches and the consequences onto others, usually their Arab proxies. And it's gone quite swimmingly for Iran because the puppet master in Tehran has avoided the consequences. But every now and then, Israel has to say enough is enough. And every time, every now and then, the US has to say enough and enough is enough is enough. Due to October 17th and February 4th, we saw 165 attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, and we only responded nine times. And then on January 28th, we saw three American service members killed in Jordan. The, U the Biden administration responded with more serious attacks, about 85 in Iraq and Syria, and killed the, leading, the leader of Qaytab Hezbollah in Iraq. You know what happened after that? Not a single Iranian back attack on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. So if you look at the history here, going back to the Reagan era, Iran backs down when they face resolute military force and they view weakness as an invitation for additional aggression. Oh, that is a fascinating assessment, especially because you hear all the time that they, because of these proxies, Iran is able to have some kind of strategic patience uh, as they move forward. Uh, let's talk a little bit about last week. Uh, Iran's foreign minister said that Israel would be punished and that America needs to be held accountable. Uh, the Pentagon confirming last week that Israel was behind that attack in Damascus. Uh, do you think that the U.S. needs to be concerned here and, and taking that as a threat? I think the U.S. should absolutely be concerned about uh, attacks on our forces in the region. We could see attacks here in our homeland. It's not the first time Iran has tried to threaten Americans or others here in our homeland. Um, you know, this is this is a this is a radical regime posing as a nation state, and uh, you know, this is the most significant strike at the puppet masters, arguably since the Qasem Soleimani strike during the Trump administration. And they responded to that by sending more than more than a dozen ballistic missiles at two bases in northern Iraq, giving 100 Americans or more traumatic brain injury. So I think you have to assume there's going to be a strong attack, a response by the Iranians. Uh, and if if Israel and the United States respond weakly, we'll see, simply see more of the same from Iran. 
All right, Bradley Bowman, uh, I can't thank you enough for your very important assessment of this. And I know we'll be talking to you uh, in the days and weeks to come. Thank you for your time.